Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, so today we are going to discuss about the sustainable coding and uh, you know the green practices where we future friendly development, software development. So let's let's move on. So whenever we talk about the sustainability, there are three pillars we mostly uh, you know discuss: the environmental one, the social one, and the economic. But today we are going to you know discuss about the sustainable coding i don't know as a developer i think it's nowadays you know we need to discuss about the sustainable things in coding as well because so going ahead uh, i'm just uh, you know i have a question like here uh, is this picture looks like you know sustainable co coding looks like is it maybe or maybe not <laughs> okay this one <laughs> kind of right yeah but I would say this picture I think looks good whenever you know looking into the earth how we can make it more you know greener in our you know software development things and whatever the infrastructure we have in the IT. So let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, you know understand the sustainability you know the what <coughs> aim we have. So our aim is to make an you know positive impact to the software development and. Uh, as a developer, our choices either harm or either help the planet. So we have to decide in which way we can, you know, contribute into that. So in this talk, we are going to, you know, uh, discuss about the, those uh, eco-friendly practices that we can make and uh, make our uh, planet greener. So going ahead, uh, first of all, we'll, you know, uh, uh, go through with the some impacts uh, impact uh, which things will mostly impact the you know the planet and whenever we you know in a, as a software industry the data centers is the first thing comes in a, you know our mind that that will consumes a lot of energy because as of now i mean most of the surveys will told uh, tell that that you know in tw 2022 till about 1% of global engineering uh, uh, energy consumption is uh, you know is only for data centers some of the reports also showing that more than that around 3%. Along with that, uh, data centers also consume, uh, you know, as uh, going ahead annually, it will increase by 3 to 5% annually as well. Because, uh, you know, the rising demands of the digital services and uh, now the era of generative AI and LLMs, the, you know, the, the whatever the fine tuning, the uh, large language model training, it will take a lot of energy uh, you know a lot of data centers and consumptions so data centers will uh, you know making a huge impact on that uh, energy consumption part apart from that uh, whenever we talk about the software development uh, we you know we uh, we can talk about the carbon footprint as well uh, because our code whenever whatever we write in as a software developer uh the code execution code uh, proficiency and all those things will uh, you know impact directly or indirectly to the planet and uh, uh, the emissions uh, carbon emission we can get from that is also uh, quite you know uh, it's a need of measurement and the control those things so uh, just uh, so these are the things i think uh, you know data center one the coding efficiency or I mean, uh, in the software development things, a lot, uh, you know, these way we can uh, uh, measure those things in impact things. But now, uh, looking into the optimization, so what we can change from our side, okay, uh, to, you know, optimize the data centers, uh, mostly, first, first of all, we should have energy efficient hardware and the infrastructure. So, uh, that is most important one. Uh, in the data center, uh, the mo uh, you know energy consumption, uh, the cooling and ventilation is energy consumption part. It will take a lot of energy to make those data center cooler, and uh, you know so, you know some few of the data centers are also because of just the cooling problem solved is they are trying to underwater underwater data centers and all those things. So we can uh, look into that how we can you know improve that cooling and ventilation system to the data centers, and. Uh, even uh, users of the virtualization and cloud computing that will also benefits to you know directly uh, you know using the 
our local hardware and uh, you know bare metal systems and all those things so uh, one example that you know google's energy efficient data center so as they said they are trying to use the renewable uh, energy to manage their data centers and all those things but yeah i mean uh, that was the one thing that we can use the renewable sources to power those uh, data centers then uh, the green coding practices so yeah here we came to you know this coding things uh, like how we can make the pro, uh, make the impact uh, to the a sustainable coding with the uh, you know the coding practices we are using so first of all write efficient algorithms okay then uh, minimize resource usages uh, with those uh, you know coding uh, tactics and then uh, whatever the code we write make sure that you know uh, they are uh, the time complexity and all those things are the best com best one so that uh, you know the with the minimalistic time the executions will be faster so uh, one example is about the la uh, lazy loading uh, so suppose uh, nowadays we mostly use in the web development part that lazy loadings uh, so whatever the content we required we can only load uh, at that particular time and uh, as per the user's requirement uh, run time will face that data so in that uh, in that case uh, uh, you know the lazy loading uh, Uh, helps to you know uh, optimize the energy because uh, it's not uh, in a in a single uh, ex single time we are executing everything uh, from the data but it's just as per requirement uh, we are uh, fetching from the you know data center so it will also uh, help us to optimize that talking about the uh, algorithms so yeah here we can uh, talk a lot on that like uh, different types of algorithm so before going to the measuring that i'll give uh, uh, some examples of that so suppose we are using a sorting so uh, these examples may be you know uh, uh, it may be incident based uh, or criteria based different different scenarios may be used this but in general uh, suppose in sorting a sustainable uh, algorithm should be merge sort and quick sort a uh, non sustainable is you know bubble sort and selection because as you can see the you know the time complexity of uh, those algorithms here it because of that whatever the uh, the algorithm will give the best time cl complexity we can uh, make sure that you know it's a sustainable one in the searching one same uh, binary search is quite efficient and the linear search is not because uh, you know it scan through the entire entire list uh, uh, here so and same as in graph as well so as uh, this graph ka algorithm is quite uh, you know famous with the priority queue uh, so minimize the unnecessary exploration while you know finding the paths and all those things so and in the brute force uh, the time uh, you know the shortest path calculation waste resources so these are the some uh, algorithms we can sort uh, you know differentiate in the sustainable and non sustainable while thinking about the sustainable coding i think we should definitely make sure that th those things in keep in mind that yeah whatever the selection of our algorithm that will also impact uh, uh, the sustainable coding now coming to the major uh, measuring the uh, things so uh, we should you know measure the algorithm efficiency uh, you know there are profilers available so there is one example i can do the intel vitian profiler so whatever uh, the, this profiler is created for whatever the services and applications running on the intel processor so they will measure this uh, uh, with this tool uh, profiler we can get to know that how much uh, energy is consumed by these applications uh, running on the intel profiler the next one is the perf one so this is the you know popular uh, popular in the linux and uh, it is powerful performance profiling tool to you know that can used to be energy profiling the next one is about how we impact the energy patient algorithms and the you know resource resource consumption as well to measuring the resource consumption enhancing the sustainable efforts significantly and all those uh, you know uh, will contribute to that so i think uh, in this way the algorithms we can uh, improve that the next uh, you know hot topic nowadays about the generative ai as and large language models uh, so i think uh, nowadays everyone knows that you know how much the gpu war is going on and all those things so and gpus are uh, quite you uh, know uh, they needs a lot of power to that uh, so uh, i'll just give an example on that i mean uh, for large language model the gpus are much more necessary 
uh, but uh, in the you know the sustainable part of that the google's example that they are uh, using the tpus as well so they are uh, optimized in such a way that whatever their you know matrix multiplication and whatever the coding processor the software capable of uh, the hardware and in that way they are trying to reduce their uh, energy efficiency on that so uh, yeah we have to make sure that how we can you know uh, uh avoid uh you know large language models to consume lot of energy and that and we have to find a way a much greener way to make sure that those uh, models will not much more uh, harm the planet because you know the power is huge but the impact behind the scenes is also quite uh, you know we need to think on that as well so i think uh, going ahead we have to think on the greener planet uh then yeah the renewable energy integration so this is what we can do uh, so most of the companies have already started that apple microsoft as well that to making the you know carbon footprint zero the making their data centers and all those things uh, running on the renewable energy sources so yeah we have to use the renewable energy sources like you know giving to the one example like uh, in a uh, our electric cars we have most of the electric cars running on the electricity so we said that it's a green energy but the energy to charge those cars is generated from suppose thermal power plant then how we could say that it is a, you know green energy it's not so we should have a path from end to end the green energy and the renewable sources so that we can promote uh, in the tech as well the yeah the case study uh, yeah we have a lot of case study actually uh, the one i said about the uh, google that they using a, a tp uh, tpus for that uh apples has their own but yeah about the green software foundation i would say uh, they are you know uh, making some carbon aware computing efficient coding standard industry standard collaborative project because uh, they want to make sure that this foundation to collaborate with all the industry uh, leading companies and to follow those practice so that in future going ahead we should have you know a lot uh, technology advancement but we have to uh, save our planet as well so combining all those this foundation is making you know the uh, creating some uh, protocols that will uh, going ahead will help uh, to everyone comes in the same page and follow the practices so that uh, that the you know the coding environment or the it technology it world is not much harm and uh, either it will help everyone so i think uh, uh, you can check out the green software uh, foundation the link is here so uh, that will you know gives more idea on that uh, so on that uh, uh, yeah i think uh, before question and add, i just wanted to you know conclude the things like uh, we have to take immediate action because i think for me uh, nowadays we can see it's time we have to take immediate actions to implementing uh, the sustainable practices like we have to use the renewable energy sources we have to use the algorithm uh, uh, in such a way that it will uh, you know best because it's important for the uh, you know day to day life to make it the software work faster but it should also save the energy as well and the last one spreading awareness to the development that's what i'm doing here so you can also guys do the you know the spread the awareness of the green practices uh to make sure that the everyone is uh, uh use the greener practices for the future friendly uh coding so yeah uh, that's all i'm uh, open for the q and a here anything i think we have one minute yeah we have one minute any questions yeah this product platform is uh, a product energy performance tools do they work only on intel or are there for example also for arm yeah so each uh, uh, each processor uh, companies like intel they have their own profilers uh, so that uh, on using that we can measure the pro, you know the energy efficiency and how much energy they have consumed so for intel that one the intel vtune is there for uh, amd there is amd uh, something uh, you know the uh, profiler is there and the purpose for linux systems as well as you know there are android profilers as well there are uh mac profilers as well there so with that we can measure the energy efficiency yeah any question so yeah i think thank you so much